Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Today my topic is the default VLAN and the native VLAN. I will spend more time in explaining the native VLAN because the term might be the one of the most confusing concepts in the Cisco world. I will also talk about why we need native VLAN and what idea is behind it. In order to understand these two concepts, we must have a solid knowledge of VLAN, IEEE AO2-1Q standard, trunk, trunk port, and access port. Please check these three videos if necessary. The default VLAN is VLAN 1, a default setting on Cisco switches and most other vendors. Unless we specifically assign access port to a particular VLAN, such as VLAN 10 or VLAN 20, the access port belongs to VLAN 1. Remember two important points about the default VLAN. 1. We cannot change the default VLAN. We cannot even delete the default VLAN. It's a default setting. It is VLAN 1. 2. VLAN 1 is never intended to be used as the standard data VLAN. Let's talk about native VLAN. A native VLAN is a special VLAN whose traffic traverses on the AO2-1Q trunk without a VLAN tag. The native VLAN and the management VLAN could be the same, but a good security practice is they are not. By default, the native VLAN is VLAN 1, but we can change it to any number such as VLAN 2 or 20 or VLAN 99 or whatever you like. It can be configured on the trunk port. In the example above, computer E and computer F are not assigned to any VLAN and thus they belong to VLAN 1 by default. When computer E sends a frame to computer F, it can travel over the trunk without any VLAN tag. The native VLAN is a per trunk per switch configuration. A best security practice is to change native VLAN to a different VLAN other than VLAN 1. Use a special number such as 99 or the angel number 666 or the lucky number 777 because default native VLAN, which is VLAN 1, on a Cisco switch allows a possible VLAN hopping attack. Many IT people simply shy away from native VLAN. One last point. The native VLAN should be the same on both ends of the trunk. Otherwise, the trunk will not operate properly. Many people are okay with the definition of native VLAN, but they always wonder, why native VLAN? And what's the purpose? Here I list three reasons. 1. Native VLAN is one concept defined in an AO2.1Q standard that was created for backward compatibility with old devices that don't support VLANs. On an Ethernet network, all devices on the link must still be capable of communicating even if they do not speak the AO2.1Q protocol. 2. The native VLAN is used by the switch to carry specific control and management protocol traffic like Cisco Discover protocol, VLAN trunking protocol, spanning tree protocols, or some other network management traffic. This type of control traffic does not need any VLAN tag to cross over the trunk. The idea behind a native VLAN is that some network traffic still flows over the whole switched network even when trunk or trunking fields. 3. The native VLAN is also useful when we deal with voice over IP or VoIP. Let's use one example to elaborate on this point. Here we have two IP phones and two computers. We can connect each of these four devices separately to their switch 
And this type of setting requires two keyboard connection to each workstation, which is wasteful considering two separate wirings. The normal setup is IP phone is connected to a switch, and a PC is connected to the IP phone. Notice the link between switch and IP phone can be configured as a trunk because IP phone has a built-in switch which supports AO2.1Q standard. The IP phone and PC share the one same link. Considering bandwidth competition and voice quality control, we like to have two separate VLANs. VLAN 10 is for the data VLAN, and VLAN 20 is for the voice VLAN. Keep in mind, a PC only sends or expects to receive untagged traffic, while the IP phone support AO2.1Q standard and sends and expects to receive tagged traffic. Now, the native VLAN is useful in this scenario. Suppose on all trunk ports, VLAN 10 is configured as the native VLAN, which means data traffic from VLAN 10 would travel without any VLAN tag. When IP phone 1 gets the frame from computer A, it just forwards it to switch 1, and then from switch 1 to switch 2, from switch 2 to phone 2, and finally to the destination. On the other hand, the voice VLAN traffic is tagged. Here's the path from IP phone 1 to IP phone 2. From this example, we can see native VLAN is useful when data VLAN and voice VLAN shares one same link. I want to make it very clear. This example is just one of the many options for voice VLAN setup. It is not the only option, and we do not have to use the native VLAN. In this video, we talked about default VLAN and a native VLAN, and we spent a lot of time in explaining the idea behind native VLAN. I hope I could explain these two concepts more clearly without causing further confusion. I know there's a lot of experts over there. Please leave your comments and share your insights and knowledge. I hope this video is helpful. If you want to learn network systematically, please check out my playlists. They are organized by topics. Thank you very much, and see you next time.